What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be discussing a specific WWE Elite Wave, man. This is a wave that I think has been pretty controversial, and we'll dive into all my different thoughts about it, man. Today, we're talking about the WWE Elite Walmart exclusive Monday Night Wars line. Now, this is a line that was revealed to us at WrestleMania 39. It was the first time that they revealed it to us. We got the grayscaled or the sort of sprayed over prototypes, if you will, of the first series. It did feature Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Hulk Hogan, and Scott Hall, and it did have the build a figure Lex Luger and everybody was excited for this wave. A lot of potential for this wave going in and now we are up to six sets now of the Monday Night Wars series. If you're not counting the greatest hits or the best of Monday Night Wars sets, it's a whole other can of worms that I want to get into today. But I kind of want to discuss this line because I think that it is a very interesting line. And, you know, they did do away with the Ruthless Aggression line to bring in the Monday Night Wars line and I think that I have been a fan of both lines in certain ways and then I haven't been a fan of you know every single aspect of these waves but I guess, you, can, you know, nobody bats a thousand we talk about it all the time but I want to go through each set and kind of talk about each thing and where my stance is on this but one thing we got to get out of the way first that I want to talk about with this wave is the distribution on this set or this series as a whole has been absolutely atrocious and when I say absolutely atrocious I mean the worst I've ever seen it's been that bad you know I think that Target does a really good job of getting their exclusives out and I don't know if they're comparable I, I don't know how many I know that Target obviously has a, a ton of stores like Walmart but I want to say that Walmart has way more stores than Target I could be wrong about that, but maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not sure, but Walmart's distribution has always been absolutely trash. Target has been much better, especially in the last few years. I know back when the NXT elites were a thing, Target had some trouble getting a lot of those in their in-house, you know, and having those to distribute, but I think Target has been fantastic at getting their ultimates in, at getting their elites in, and getting these legend sets in, and even these box sets. They've been so good. I feel like you can find any Target exclusive. You can walk in the doors right now and usually find these at these brick-and-mortar Target stores and you don't have to even rely on the online scale but I think I don't know maybe I'm maybe that's just my experience but as far as Walmart is concerned man the Monday Night Wars line has been just atrocious I think series one was really easy to find I felt like you could find it really easy or at least it was easier than the rest of them you found it on that Wrestlemania shipper I think it was and it, it got restocked quite a few times and then even when they hit the resets man I have the, I shish you not this is a true story I have not seen series two three four five six or or the best hits. The only ones that I have found, I haven't seen any of Series 2. I have seen The Rock of Series 3, which is the biggest shelf warmer of the of the entire set. The Rock is the biggest shelf warmer out of Series number 3. Out of Series 4, haven't seen any of them. Out of Series 5, I found Lita and Ultimate Warrior, but I did pass those along and sold those on my whatnot, so I didn't even, you know, I didn't bring those in or keep those figures in any stretch. I probably would have kept them if I found multiple copies, but I was trying to get some inventory for people to be able to, you know, to be able to purchase those and whatnot, but the, the Series 5 and then Series 6 I don't think has hit quite yet, so you can't really judge that one, but I'm not holding my breath on that one, man, but we're going to go through here, and then of course the best stuff. Haven't seen any of those, so it has just been, I, I don't know what the deal is, man, but this this Monday Night War set has been incredibly difficult, and as, as far as Series 1, I think I found the whole series a couple times. I think Hulk Hogan was the one that I found the most. Of. The Scott Hall I only saw twice, and then Undertaker I, could, I found a decent amount, and then Stone Cold I found an okay amount. I want to say I found about two or three of those and different stuff like that. Obviously, the builder figure is what it is, but Series 2, let's get into Series 2, because I thought Series 1 was a real banger. The only one that I didn't like out of Series 1 was the Scott Hall figure. I felt like the Scott Hall figure was very just, I don't know, it was a big miss. I didn't like the head sculpts. It didn't have any dry brushing on it and made it look very, very flat. He was too short. It was just a very, I don't know, man, he was just tiny. It, it just wasn't a good release. Probably one of the more downfalls of last year, more underwhelming elites of 2023, I think. It came out last year, right? It was that this year. I can't remember. It was definitely one of the... It doesn't matter when it came out. It wasn't very good. But if we go into... I want to say that was last year, though, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. That would be crazy if they were... I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's get into Series 2. Fake Diesel. It's a decent, you know, release. You know, I think it's a fun one. It's a little tongue-in-cheek. I, I can see where people would may appreciate that one. It's not the biggest deal for me there. The Triple H is just a repaint. Nothing to write home about with this Triple H figure. It's just a repaint of a previously done figure. It's a worse figure of a previously done figure. And if you want to really get into it, it's kind of been done twice now. This would be the third time getting this figure if you want to count the Elite 23 Triple H figure from way back in the day, but the Legends Triple H was damn good. It was the better attire. It had the two-in-one feature with all the clothes on it. It was just such a better figure. This one right here was an easy skip if you didn't want to build a figure Teddy Long, which I know a lot of people did, but the Kevin Nash here, I really like this Kevin Nash, actually. It had the, you know, the interchangeable hair there, which I think this is definitely my favorite figure from the set, even though I don't own it. I don't 
don't own any of Series 2. Makes me vomit. But then you get into the last figure, which is Cursed Rey Mysterio. This is Cursed Ultimate Edition Failed Nitro Stage Rey Mysterio. This was supposed to be an Ultimate Edition with that WCW Nitro Stage crowdfunding project, which I imagine we're going to get more info on that crowdfunding project at WrestleMania, hopefully. And I I'd like to see it before then, but we'll see. Maybe they'll have it on display at WrestleMania. But this one right here was a letdown. And you guys know that in Series 2, we were supposed to get that WCW Rey Mysterio with the overalls, and it was supposed to be an amazing figure. So if you take out this Rey Mysterio and you put in the canceled Rey Mysterio, this Series 2 would be much, much stronger. So that kind of took a hit to the Monday Night War set right there. But let's move on to Series 3. Series 3 is okay. It's just, you know, like some of the better figures in the set, they are either, they've been previously done, so you're kind of getting like an update, right? Like we've already seen Harlem Heat, and we got two pairings of Harlem Heat in the set. So you got the blue chases, you got the regular black version, then we had the Elite 46 back in the day, which is cool. You know, we haven't seen Harlem Heat in a long time, but I think that people, when they see these Monday Night War sets, they really want to see some people we've never seen or some looks we've never seen, which I guess technically you did get looks you've never seen, but it is a previously done characters. But Rob Van Dam in this set, a really good Rob Van Dam. It's just that he has Johnny Gargano syndrome and then his head sculpt was not very good. So this Rob Van Dam kind of missed the mark. It's still a great figure, but I still haven't been able to find it. And The Rock, I only bought The Rock from this set, but then I ended up selling out on whatnot as well because I only got one copy. So, you know, I was trying to, you know, give people available, you know, an opportunity to get those figures, but I still have not found any of Series 3 in person. So missing all of those, that is six figures, seven if you're counting the Disciples. So I'm missing Series 2, Series 3, and then the Rock one. It's a okay Rock. It is a previously done Rock. So again, you're getting a figure that's previously been done. It is a better version of that previously done figure, right? It's a better torso and formula. It's double jointed. It's got a better head sculpt. It's got the Rock t-shirt we've never seen. It's got the meme face. So they did throw some cool bonuses in there. It's just not the most, you know, just insanity figure you've ever seen before. But if you move on to Series 4, we do have Kurt Hennig. You have DDP, which is the chase. You have Big Boss Man and Stone Cold. This set is pretty strong. I think this is a pretty strong set. If you start off with DDP, easily the best figure in the set. I love this DDP. I, this is this might be one of the better Monday Night Wars figures they've done so far. If you wanted to rank all the Monday Night Wars figures, this would be definitely in the top five. I think this is a look of DDP we've wanted for a very long time. Not only that, you get the light jean color and the dark jean color, which is an okay chase figure, I guess, but definitely would want the light jeans over the dark jeans. But you do get a WCW current Hittig figure, which is cool. Never seen one of those before. And then we do have a Big Boss Man, which is a re-release, but at least it is an update of a Big Boss Man that came out a long time ago. But it's kind of funny because he is also from Elite 47, which is kind of funny because Big Boss Man was from Elite 47 and the Harlem Heat were from Elite 46. So you are seeing that kind of, you know, that's back-to-back -back sets here that are re-released. And then those were back-to-back -back releases from back in the day from those, you know, those series that came back-to-back -back in 46 and 47. But then Stone Cold, really love this Stone Cold, even though I can't stand some aspects of it. I wish they'd give him bigger shoulders and arms, but I will say this was one of my favorite figures in the set. Probably my favorite figure in the set outside of DDP, just because I've wanted this shirt in this moment and having black shorts Austin or black jorts Austin has been something I've wanted for years and years from Mattel. So getting that was definitely something I wanted to see. And he has the watch, so it is a pretty cool figure, but it is definitely, so it's kind of a repaint of a previously done figure, right? It's not the most over-the-top figure, but for me personally, I did like this figure. And then you have the Commissioner HBK, which is kind of a redo of the previously done flashback Walmart exclusive Commissioner HBK build a figure, which was a good figure in itself, a really hard to come by figure, but he was in brown before. This is an updated take and something that maybe people wanted for sure, but there is Series 4. Haven't seen any of those. Again, haven't seen any of those, unfortunately, but then you get into Series 5. Again, I have seen Lita and Ultimate Warrior from this set. Never got to unbox them, never got to pose them around or do anything, but you have 6, which is the chase in this set. I know a lot of people have been wanting a 6 figure. We haven't had one in a very long time. You have the Lita figure, very plain Jane Lita, not a Lita that I think is, is it's just not, I don't know. It's a Lita. Everybody loves Lita. You want another Lita, but it's just a very plain Lita. Very plain Jane Lita. Not a lot of details in this figure, and certainly I think that it called for more. I think this Lita could have been much, much better here. And then you have Razor Ramon, which is a great Razor Ramon. It looks really good. I love the entrance vest and stuff, but it's just a repaint of a, you know, a, a Razor Ramon and another gear of a Razor Ramon. And we have a lot of different gears of Razor. We've seen a lot of, you know, different Razors over the years and different colors and stuff like that. So it is kind of just, you know, slapping a paint job on there, which is another, again, it's just kind of a repaint of a previously done figure, updating it with double jointed arms and calling it a day, which I guess, it just seems that a lot of Mattel figures nowadays, that is a lot of what we're seeing, at least new releases. We're seeing a lot of that just repaint and double jointed arm treatment, which I guess is called for in some cases, but I think that a lot of people would agree that there have been a lot of re-release lines, which again, in certain cases, I think that it calls for it and that we need it, but in certain other cases, people are probably like, Jesus Christ, can we get something brand new? Can we see some new sculpts and things? But Ultimate 
Warrior is the last figure in the set, which was pretty cool, but again, he is another cursed figure. He's another uh, re-release of the Ultimate Edition canceled figure or the failure Nitro Stage Ultimate, Edi Ultimate Edition Ultimate Warrior from that entire crowdfunding project. And it's a cool figure. I really wish I could have held on to that one. I'm, I definitely want to find all of these figures. I want every single one of these. As you guys know, we're trying to you know, get every, I want every elite. That would be the goal to, to be able to do that, especially for reviews and things like that. I like to have things on hand so you guys can see the differences when you come to reviews or when we talk about these figures so that I have the best knowledge possible about a figure that I own. I mean, for the most part, I could look at these figures and kind of tell based on parts and stuff how well a figure moves and stuff. I could probably tell you, but you got to have it in hand. You got to be able to hold it and, you know, pose it around and see what it's like fully in a review. But the build a figure in series five is Dusty Rhodes, which I thought was an okay one. I like to have Dusty, but it's just a very moment in time Dusty, which I guess a lot of people may like, but for me personally, it wasn't the greatest Build-A-Figure ever. I do like the jeans. I do like the boots. It's just, I don't know. It, it is what it is. I'm not going to hate on it, but it's not something that really, you know, calls to me personally or really just plays the chords that I like. You know what I mean? So there is Series 5. Now, Series 6, Series 6 for me looks like the best possible Monday Night Wars line we've seen to date. It looks so good. I think this entire set is absolutely good. Starting up first, we have Booker T, which I think if we don't have this figure in hand by the end of 2024. This is going to be one of my early contenders for 2025 Elite of the Year. It's definitely going to be in my top 10. I don't see how you're going to beat this. I don't know what it is about this Booker T, but it looks so good. It looks so good, and I know we've seen Booker T. We haven't seen Booker T like this, but we have seen a lot of Booker T's in the past. I understand that. You know, it's not that people are saying that it's not that great or that good, but the cha in this white gear, man, this is a figure that a lot of people have wanted on their list for a very long time. I know, personally, I've wanted this look of Booker T for a very long time, and to have a chase and having him two and one here, I don't know what it is, but this Booker T looks so damn good. It looks so good. I can't wait for this. I cannot wait to find this figure. Will I ever find it, Brad? Who the hell knows? But let's move on to the next figure in the set. It is a cane, which I know we get a lot of re-release canes, but I will say this one does look good. I can say this one looks very, very strong. It does look very good. I can say that with a straight face. It is a really good cane figure. It's just that we have seen so many different canes over the last couple years, and they're all getting the re-release treatment, but it does look like this one has a couple more details or something about it that does look really good. I know we have the defining moments and we do have the from the vaults and we do have this and they're re-releasing a lot of cane figures, but at least this one does look really good. And then we do have hardcore hack, which looks very good. We kind of have like a version of Sandman here, which I'm all aboard the Sandman train. Any Sandmans we get, I will definitely be on board. I'm loving that they're not just giving him the, you know, the mankind legs or the Mick Foley legs. We are getting kind of a different look here, which I appreciate. And he comes with a lot of accessories. I'm very excited for this Sandman. I bet we'll get even more of him later on. And honestly, I the more I'm thinking thinking about it, man, the more I'm leaning towards, I think they're going to do some sort of ECW crowdfunding project. I don't know why that's in my head, but for some reason, there there's just something that's telling me we're going to get some sort of ECW stage or something, maybe like the brick wall with the, you know, the, like the chain link fence and everything like that, and maybe some steps or something. I don't know. I don't know where they're going, but I'm just, I'm just fantasy booking it in my head, but I don't know what they're going to do, but I would imagine it's going to be some sort of 90s project. There's going to be something from the 90s or something like that. I don't know. That's just where I'm at. It's either going to be something to do with WWF and the Attitude Era. Like, I don't think it'll be the stage, obviously. They already said that it was going to be the big Raw stage if we could get the Nitro stage funded. Highly doubt it would be something like that. So it may be something WWF or Attitude Era inspired or something like that tying in there. Or I'm thinking it could be possibly ECW. But we will see. We will obviously see. Maybe they could get us some cool, you know, signees and some cool Ultimate Editions to go with it. But we will have to see, man. But let's move this thing along, man. The British Bulldog is the last figure in Series 6. And my God, he looks good too, man. I could already see a base for white attires and different characters. And you get the Golga build a figure, which is a really cool inclusion. This is the kind of stuff that I think people really wanted out of the Monday Night Wars line. Some really cool reaches or some different characters and sculpts and things like that. So this is really cool. And this will definitely be one of the better Build-A-Figures of the year. And it looks like it's just going to be a ball of fun, man. So I'm excited for that figure as well. Then you have the Best of featuring Eddie Guerrero, which is a re-release of the Hall of Champions. You have the HBK, which is a double re-release. We've seen that multiple times over before. And then we do have the Bam Bam Bigelow, which is a re-release of the Legends figure from a couple years back. And then we do have Triple H, which is a re-release of the Attitude Era Triple H. And then you do have the Build-A-Figure Vincent there, which is essentially 
just a reuse of different Build-A-Figure parts. It's really, I mean, you take the Royal Rumble Build-A-Figure Virgil, and then you put it together with the Build-A-Figure British Bulldog with black jeans instead, and that's essentially what you have there. So, yeah, I mean, I get it. You got to be creative in your reuse and get the most out of your molds. I understand that, but a lot of these figures, man, I just think that the set has been up and down. But I guess the Ruthless Aggression Elites were kind of up and down too, but I think I was more excited for some of those figures than these, but that could be a variety of different things there. So we'll have to see, man, but I think at the end of the day, the Monday Night War set, I think the biggest deal with it is just the distribution. I think the distribution could be so much better than it has been, and hopefully we will see some good things out of the Monday Night War set as we continue on. But I'm most excited about the crowdfund project. I think that the crowdfund project is going to have something to do with the Monday Night Wars line. I would think so. I would think so. We'll see what comes of it. You know, we may, I may be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I think it's definitely going to be wrapped up in, I think they're going to pivot from WCW. I think we'll get more into the WWF side of things or the WWE side of things. So we'll have to see, man. But I think that is pretty much going to wrap up my video today on the Monday Night Wars and talking about it at length, man. I just want to get on here, shoot the shish a little bit and talk about my thoughts on this. You guys know I have nowhere to take my thoughts, so I go here with it. I have nobody to discuss it with. So I come to you guys to discuss it. You can let me know all the things down below, man. But I'm getting the hell out. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you missed our videos from the past week, man, we have had a lot of fun here. Got to post my WrestleMania 40 vlog, which was a ton of fun. Got to talk about some different projects I've been working on. And we talked about the Fan Central or the Fan Takeover line just the other day. So I'd greatly appreciate that, man. If you guys enjoy WWE figures or talking at length, man, check out the channel. We have so many different videos where we just discuss them or talk about them, man, because I, I love it. You know, this is a passion, and I like to talk about it and the stuff that I enjoy. So hopefully you guys do, too, if you guys missed our Ringside Fest coverage the other day. But that is going to wrap the video, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on all this down in the comment section below. Leave me all your thoughts again. But a huge shout-out to our Patreon members, man. You guys are unbelievable. Thank you guys so very much for everything. I love you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.